right. Welcome back. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, here we are. Game number two coming at us here. Penta Sports taking on effects here. Radiant or effect pick. even. Effect is up one game to nothing here in this best of the three series of what is the Starliner I League Star Series Invitational. Did I say that backwards? Star Series I League. Star Ladder I League Star Series Invitational. No, I said that correctly. Uh, number two Ten European seconds. qualifier. Wait, is there even Star Series? There is. Okay. Five Anywho, <laughs> point is, these are the European qualifiers. This is a first round matchup. The winner of this actually plays Navi in Reserve the next time. round. So I know, you know, kind of a fan favorite team right there. So looking forward to that one as well. But we have to find out which team will play them. And right now, Effect kind of living up to the idea that they are the better team in this matchup going into it. So looked very good, frankly, in that first game. Penta definitely has an uphill climb. So we'll see Radiant how things are adjusted back. this time around. I'm Breaky CPK, your caster here. We got uh, the start to the draft in. Another kind of interesting start. First off, you see the Monkey King ban initially, this time by Penta, actually. Of course, Effect played it last time, so I'm not going to give that up. Treant's been a very popular hero lately, today. too, so not surprised to see him taken away. But uh, these Five picks are kind of interesting, too, today. because it was Crystal Maiden first pick, actually, by Effect, which in itself is not a He's usual thing, but uh, they went with Crystal Maiden, then was, went to LC Sniper on the other side, and then Abaddon picked up by effect now. Now, again, one of the big criti criticisms of the first game was that Penta attempted to run the one position Abaddon, and uh, the couple of times we've seen it lately just frankly hasn't done too well. So I'm going to assume that effect is not looking to do that. <laughs> I'm going to hope that's a safe assumption there, running more of the offlane instead, but we'll keep an Radiant eye on what they back. choose to continue to draft right here. But, yeah, the heavy priority on the Crystal Maiden is kind of the interesting thing as well. I guess uh, perhaps just simply a comfortable uh, hero for whoever's going to play it here. Our Zeke uh, seemed to be their, their five support player playing the Rubik last game, so Ten seconds uh, perhaps going to end up in his hands here, but um, again, maybe just a comfortable hero. Five he is the drafter, it looks like, so going to be perhaps getting it for himself, but now the third picks to come Reserve here in the near future, time. some fourth bans first. We have the Juggernaut ban by Penta, as well as that Silencer. We have back. Ursa, and now that fourth band coming out from Effect before advancing on. So they're going to go the Slark route. So, yeah, kind of another kind of run-at-you hero team. that will uh, get ganks quickly on your squishies especially. So not surprised to see that band happening. But now Penta going to have to think about their third pick here. Can they get the Sniper? Who, he actually did pretty well last game. Overall, again, the, the game didn't go too well for Penta. But Blazemon on the Sniper looked pretty good. Who are they going to get for Skitter this time around, though? In that... One position here is the definitely the key question. Legion Commander. Also, uh, you know, having the Abaddon against the Legion Commander, you can consider it to be pretty good in itself. You know, the Aphotic Shield will help whatever teammate gets caught by uh, mitigating plenty of damage. And even himself, of course, with that borrowed time. Now, as we saw in the last game, you get the Silver Edge, and that kind of changes things a little bit. So as far as the passive proc working in his favor. so But uh, that'll take some time for him to build that up. They will go the Ogre Magi pick, so... Going to run around this strategy of buff the sniper. Let's play buff the sniper here. Ten is uh, is going to be Pento's strategy already with the Ogre and the LC. Something like a Vengeful Five Spirit seconds. comes to mind as far as that one position now. Wouldn't be surprised to see coming out for Penta. Reserve time. Kind of continuing that theme of uh, buffing up your sniper here. But the third pick for effect is going to happen. You know, they like to respond. Earth Spirit's still on the board. A hero that would come to mind as far as taking advantage of Crystal Maiden R especially and being able to roam uh, earlier on in the game. Life Stealer is also another option as a one position at least. So that's uh, what the direction effect is going to choose to go in so far. Don't only really have the greatest uh, target to infest just yet as far as the infest bomb set up here so Ten seconds remaining. I go back to the earth spirit who <laughs> actually is potentially a decent option for that Five and then whatever their mid I guess ends up being hell something like a storm spirit could perhaps be fun to see uh, for effect Reserve right here time. pending on uh, if Travel Afro Ninja is comfortable okay <laughs> I know it's not Afro Ninja it's, just, team it's honestly so fun to say Afro Ninja Afro Ninja there we go Troll Warlord coming Storm out for Penta spirit. hey I actually guessed a hero Radiant correctly, and it wasn't a back. typical one. How about, you know, that's, I'm going to give myself a pat on the back. Here you go. Twitch chat, you're my co-caster. I appreciate the help as well. Thank you, guys. Uh, no, but Storm Spirit coming out again. It 
kind of just makes sense as far as a transport, at least, for Lifestealer. And they don't really have the best lockdown for, on Pentasite. You know, last game they actually had a couple of silences. They had Disruptor. They had Ricky. This time around, they don't got that great of lockdown again. The Troll Warlord are not going to help with that necessarily unless some Bash Brocks. Same thing He's with Sniper with the Headshots. You got Argo Magic Fire Blast here, but then LC the Duel. But, uh, you know, none of those are those hard stuns. You know, things like the Sand King Stun or for Silences, for that matter, as we just went over there. So, um, seems like this actually could be a strong Storm Spirit game, actually, coming out. But, yeah, speaking of buffing the Sniper, I guess Troll kind of fits that theme as well. Uh, with the idea of the battle trance there. Helping for pushing lanes and that with the bloodlust throwing up. These, uh, both remaining. the sniper and the troll wall are going to be attacking very, very fast here. Five seconds remaining. And the press the attack for that matter. <coughs> so what do they need on either side? A tusk He's band out coming out from Penta. Again, they still need that four roll. Earth Spirit still comes to mind, honestly. I guess Tusk would have been also a solid option too, but <coughs> I guess it ultimately depends how they really want to play the game. But uh, another four positions, Slaughter. Actually, Slaughter wouldn't be a bad option here. Um, they yeah, I Ten like Slaughter. Remaining. I'm gonna say they pick Slaughter here. I'm just gonna you know just gonna stick with it, stick with Five my guns, seconds remaining. and hope effect makes me look even better. Reserve time. Come on now, 140 remaining. Just do it. Don't even think about it. Just do it. Only six seconds left on Penta's side for reserve time, so they're going to have to choose pretty quickly when it comes to uh, this pick happening here. They'll need their main support, and you see them taking out Dazzle, actually. What well, could have been an annoying option right here, so I like that, Ben. <coughs> Maybe like a Shadow Demon, even. Could be interesting for us, like a Savior. Ah, Shadow Demon's never seen that. Yeah, he's, he's weak. Never mind. That was bad. I'm sorry, guys. That was a horrible option. Lich wouldn't be bad. <laughs> the armor wouldn't be bad here, actually. We did see Lich yesterday, and he did get that buff to his uh, Chain Frost, actually. Could be an interesting choice, too. Why is this guy pretending to be Dota Capitalist? Bitch, please. Capitalist pretends to be me. Let's be honest. No, I'm just kidding. I love the guy. Nice we homies. Stalker. Night Stalker. Radiant team okay. Pick. That's not one I guessed. Thanks for making me look bad. In fact, we tried. Nope. Night Stalker, though. Oh, God, Night Stalker. History with Night Stalker. For me as a caster, not <laughs> again, I'm not saying this says much, but um, personally, it doesn't feel like he's really had the greatest games. It doesn't feel like he's had the, these winning results for his team. So it's a great hero for getting ahead early. You know, the first night falls, and all of a sudden he's getting a kill or two, and it's great, but then... Definitely feels like he kind of dies out. Now, you know, you get the axe on him, takes away that vision, and can potentially become pretty powerful, ideally. But um, I, it's not its not a direction I expected, that's for sure. But they go the Night Stalker, and then Ricky responds on the other side from Penta. So they're once again going to go with the Ricky, who last game, again, he did all right. Don't, didn't necessarily do the, the greatest in the end, but no, Penta obviously kind of struggled as a team here. But... The silence will be nice against Storm Spirit. I do like that, the fact that they have that now to go up against um, the Storm Spirit here. So kind of talking about the Ten lack of lockdown remaining. and silence in general. So that's, uh, that's a good option to have as Five well. But, yeah, the Night Stalker, remaining. final pick. Here you see how that works for effect right here. But, again, the idea of buff up the Sniper, buff up the Troll Warlord. That's a strategy here for Penta, no doubt. And look to take objectives earlier on. But it's all going to kind of come down to... How um, how good of a start the Storm Spirit has in the matchup against Sniper, and then how they're able to make work with the potential Infest Bombs to come. And, of course, that first Nightfall as well. Going back to, as always, being an, an important idea with the Night Stalker. So here we go. Game number two coming at us. A one nothing lead currently for effect, of course. As they are in the lead here in this best out of three series. Our final first-run matchup. So... Um, I believe, um, <laughs> well, good or bad, but no, um, I, this is going to be personally my last day casting this event. So it's been a lot of fun, you know, started casting the beginning of yesterday and now today. So, uh, looking forward to uh, finishing strong here, um, tomorrow. I'm not exactly sure the catches are going to be lined up uh, for the, the remaining parts of the, the coverage, but man, uh, I'll definitely be watching. That's for sure. There's definitely some great matchups to be had. You know, we, right now we got empire versus friends. 
Vega Squadron versus EPG, Cloud9 versus Team Spirit, which personally I think that's going to be the best one out of those quarterfinals, and then Na'Vi versus the winner of this again. So it's going to start to get you know get be better as the tournament advances on right here. As I guess you really expect, but that's still good to see. <coughs> Roger on Night Stalker. He gets there pretty quickly and didn't actually place a ward down. He'll fall back before doing anything. He does have the two sentries on him, though. DNZ going to scout that out. Abaddon will be in the off lane, so thank God there. Josh Lowe going to be playing it here. You got Sedoya Life Stealer, poor man shield in the makings. Well, the top lane is pretty much the go to build in most cases, I feel like. What we see now, the double slippers of agility here. <coughs> yeah, heavy priority on the Crystal Maiden again. This was a first pick Crystal Maiden. We'll see how our Zeke does on such hero. Oh, let me update the, uh, the title of the stream as well, real quickly. The battle begins. Right, there we go. Okay. Battle begins indeed. Here we go. Both sides controlling their bounty runes. No contestant put up this time around. So last time we saw the Reiki actually steal the bounty rune. This time DNC is not going to make a play for it. Decides to be safe. I'm wondering if that had to do with him spotting the Sentry Wars picked up. And I could have felt like that might have been a little dangerous for him perhaps. So, yeah, open wounds can be scary. Gets caught by that, so. Decides it's best not to go for it. He's going to be sitting here in the middle lane. He, he counters the other sentry, but it's taken out immediately by Storm Spirit. So that was kind of a fun animation right there. Crystal Maiden. Going to be a courier of sorts for Storm Spirit. He's actually walking like he's a courier. He delivers a healing salve, and now he's going back towards the jungle. Slowly but surely. Bottom lane, Abaddon. Being pressured by Ignite here. Ogre Magi. Obviously good for that. He's protecting the Troll Warlord. Oh, we're going to be in more of this five position here. So we get farm on Ricky, of course. Ricky does not block the stack attempt, so at least Crystal Maiden able to make use of that. Trying to jungle, but going to have a hell of a time. TNC making life very difficult right here. Going to try to get the kill. Yes, Waldring Ripper down. I'll play there. So Ricky, the objective of uh, stopping the Crystal Maiden from getting some farm. Unfortunately, coming just short there. But did his darnest. So yeah, Storm Spirit versus Sniper in the middle lane, especially if this ends up being a true one versus one. But I have no clue how this should play out. <laughs> Going to be blunt with that one, but I um, feel like uh, Alpha Ninja here. Potentially we'll have a pretty good time. <laughs> spamming that overload. Or proccing it at least to... Harass the sniper, but of course shrapnel. Ever so annoying to deal with, but man, look at the damage on the Blazemon here. Blazemon currently doesn't have regen on him, actually, so Afo Ninja is actually taking advantage of that for sure. Afo Ninja. I don't even know, man. I'm gonna go back to Afro Ninja. He might have a kill right here. No, not enough damage. Had the one overload, but obviously he couldn't get a second pop off there. Sniper does stay alive, but okay, good job by Storm Spirit taking advantage of the fact that he doesn't have the regen right there. Top lane, Night Stalker runs in on a Mikey, saying hello. Nighttime still about a minute and a half away. Not looking forward to seeing Night Stalker and what uh, he does here. Uh, first Nightfall comes out, Storm Spirit going to be run down, Storm Cloud, another Shrapno. Could be in trouble. He's almost like he's going for the turn kill. He does have Christmas in a nearby Fairy Fire Pop. Not going to be enough. First Blood in favor. And the miss on the uphill second, another miss, but it doesn't matter. The Shrapno helps take him down. So, good attempt from Storm Spirit to live, but at least he gets the first blood right before. He dies, sure, but makes the best of that situation for sure. Well played there. At the same side of the token, though, the Blaze Mon here on Sniper gets the kill on Storm Spirit. So, also benefiting. So, both sides definitely having the benefit. Bottom lane, Abaddon again continues to be pressured heavily. Top lane, they're going to speak of pressure. They're going on to LC with those open wounds. The Freeze comes out of the Frostbite and no chance to get away at that point. So, no Nightfall even needed. Easy kill there. Blazemon now going on the uphill. Playing a little extra aggressive now against Storm Spirit. 
Of course, especially before he's level six. That's the time to do it. Danzi is sitting down here. Gonna make a play on Abaddon. Wait for that Aphotic Shield perhaps to wear off. But <laughs> I think he might have even ran a tower range right there. This Get seen for a split nice. second. LC, he's just jungling it looks like. So, heard that uh, press the attack go off. Okay, it is nighttime now. Night Stalker is level three. Goes back to base. He has dust. He has a smoke on him. Picks up a clarity. I mean, he's ready now. So, Roger, let's see what he makes with it. Has the 1 1 1 build. Smokes up with Crystal Maiden. Going middle lane. Looking to make a play on a sniper. That void. It's going to be powerful. No level six Storm Spirit, though, so. Will he be able to follow up effectively? Here we go, Blazemon. Oh, yeah, he's a, he's dead for sure. DNC going in, actually, so they're looking for the turn kill on the Storm Spirit, but, oh, he realizes that's a bad spot. Frostbite comes out. Sniper will fall. Storm Spirit remains alive. The Courier! Oh, no! Almost threw the Courier at them right there. That would have been horrendous. But now look at the kill from Nysarkar again. Yes, the dust comes out. DNC going to be run down. So Roger makes great use of the first Nightfall as he gets a double kill for the team. Just like that. I love the setup, too. As soon as Nightfall hit, he's back at base, full regen, you know, b buying these items of the dust and the smoke, the clarity even, and then making his way out, and it's just right on cue. So very well played. Clearly comfortable with the hero. Meanwhile, bottom lane, Josh Lowe just having fun harassing them quite a bit. Another Aphotic Shield explosion and does more damage in return than he took right there. He did choose to go to Mist Coil here as well, at least one level of it. Maybe help with some last hitting capabilities. Back to the middle lane, they're collapsing, trying to get Sniper, another Void coming out against Sniper, not the greatest at escaping. Showing why right here. Now for the press, the attack will help with that. Roger going way too deep now, and he will end up dying, running uphill with no vision. He had to expect some kind of support was coming. It seemed like Storm Spirit was also falling back and maybe even trying to make the call right there, but so Roger getting a little too comfortable with the circumstance. Unable to run him down. If anything, waiting for Storm Spirit to get level six, and that could have really been beneficial, but remains five and a half here. Invisibility. So it's not as easy for him to get close. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Down here, Crystal Maiden with an Invis rune actually sitting on top of jabs. Not the faceless jabs. Top lane, TNC. The dust comes out. That cloak not going to help him too much. The blink strike might. Not for long, though. Out comes the Infest. Sadoi guaranteeing the kill. He's had a fantastic time at the top lane, of course. Free farm, basically, nearly 3,000 net worth now with the kill to go with it. He's got those early face boots and the armlet queued up. So going to be going pretty tra traditional there as far as this build. Uh-oh. Blazemon, he's going to end up dying right here. Goes for the assassinate. He'll end up falling, though, in return. Not enough to kill our Zeke. And now, once again, Ricky's in trouble. Do they have dust this time? They might not even need it. <laughs> they don't need it. They had a sentry nearby just in case and secures that kill. Courier again kind of flying out right here. Oh, man, got to be careful with that. There's a headdress pattern on that, but actually will not be able to kill it. Going to come down to Skitter, but you see the regen pop by Roger. Now he's headed to the bottom lane. He already has an urn with those brown boots, so... Clearly, at least at this point in the game, the Night Stalker proven to be a very effective pickup. <coughs> Ricky already four deaths right now. Not a very successful game. The final pick, Ricky. Again, like the idea of the silence, but it's just he, is, he just cannot find any room at all to do to do anything in this game. So middle lane sniper again could be in trouble. This is a level six storm spear now. It's still nighttime for another 12 seconds. They're gonna make the best of it, damn it! And Roger again going to get the kill. That is. Not fall. Sniper's one that falls. Being played by Blazemon there. So, well played again. And top lane, wow. Sadoi really going in for that tower kill. It ends up getting denied, actually. So nice timing by LC. Luckily for Sadoi. Doesn't get turned on, though. And he'll just continue to farm in the jungle, meanwhile. So we're back to daytime, but Night Stalker. No, he doesn't have his darkness just yet. He's still level 5, so. Won't be able to make a dark at this time. But DNZ still continuing to try to be that... Selfish. Information for the team. As he wanders through the jungle. <coughs> How's Crystal Maiden been doing? 
Oh, she's almost level six. How about that? That's her Tranquil Boots, in fact, already. Level three Aura picked up. Another. That's a, actually another reason why Nice Stalker actually could potentially be very solid here, of course. You know, all that mana reach in. Storm Spirit gets assassinated. Probably made it pretty clear that he had vision on him, though. So, yeah, Storm Spirit knows that Ricky's potentially nearby. It's either that or a ward. And knowing, you know, the line that they're going up against, pretty confident it might be the Ricky. But no way to kind of expose him. So, <clears throat> we'll just go back to farming. Night Stalker and a Midas in the works, actually. Oh, boy, he's in trouble. It's daytime. It's your Bane. He has Nightfall of the Darkness, even. He's going to use it right there, and he will manage to live unless he assassinate. Rue comes out. He's going back in. He runs into the Shrapnel. Oh, no. I, I, you know, he wanted to get a Void off, I'm sure, but <laughs> that was not the better decision from Roger. I, I Would he have lived? I think he would have, actually, unless he got run down by Ricky, perhaps, but it seemed like if he just kept running there, he might have been fine. Chose to make the possible turnaround, though. Ends up dying as a result. Darkness still active currently, though. What does that last for? 50 seconds. Okay, so it actually a bit longer than I thought, even. Regeneration. Nice stalker making his way back to the middle lane. Several TPs here, actually. Lifestealer also coming. He's going to jump inside Storm Spirit. Here we go. <coughs> Here's that Storm Spirit bomb now. Armlet has been picked up as well. There's the Soul Ring on Storm Spirit. Where are they going is the question. They're going to avoid Vision because of the smoke. They're heading bottom lane. Now, they know Storm Spirit's missing. You see Nice Ducker's like, all right, yeah, no, I'm middle lane. Trust me, no one's, no one's going anywhere. Bottom lane, they're going to pressure Abaddon. Uh-oh, this is bad. This is going to be turn. Abaddon's like, yeah, come at me, guys. Here we go. Storm Spirit, but no! No one fest just yet. He got stunned initially. They will get the kill on a Ricky. They're going to get more freezing filled on top of that. Blaze Mon the party. Unfortunately, it's a dead party. He goes down right there. Skidder now trying to get out of the woods. He's just going to simply run and should be fine, maybe. Yeah, Storm Spirit can't really chase. And that will be the end of it. But it ends up being three kills. Ricky dying as he resurrects right there. But also now with Tower Kill. So a little bit of an awkward start there with the Fire Blast done. But ended up working out beautifully. Big freezing field from Crystal Maiden, and this start for effect is getting out of hand already. An 11-3 hero kill lead. Night Stalker actually almost has that hand of Midas here. So he's going to continue to excel from that top lane. Abaddon ports up here, trying to finish his own hand of Midas. God, where's, where's the hell with the Dominators, man? That's an item that just completely died off. They, they kept nerfing that patch after patch post 7.0, and... Eventually got to a point where people were like, all right, fine, Valve, stop it, please. Top tower is under attack. Fine, we won't pick up the item. <laughs> Still think there's potential, but yeah, we just never seen it anymore. Night Stalker, here comes a tool. He's going to say, is it enough damage, but the Assassinate might make it enough? Yes. It's a nice find there. They find him during daytime. It's just about nighttime. So when he's up, at least, I guess that's the good news, is it will be night. This will be nicely. Radiant's bottom tower. Lifestealer, Desolator queued up. See when he jumps inside uh, Storm Spirit once again, looking for another play. They're rotating towards the middle lane here. Our Zeke's going to be found, though, by the Invis Ogre Magi. Out comes the Shrapnel. The Assassin in the base, but the, the ball lightning in the background going out from Afro Ninja right here, flying around, zip zapping. Blazemon will fall. LC, no duel just yet. Eight seconds on cooldown. And Life Dealer goes inside the creep and runs away with it. But he may turn right here. Yeah, what are they doing running into this? It's a trap, damn it. Jabs is going to end up falling most likely on Ogre Magi. Poor coming in. Whoever that is, you might want to cancel. Yeah, they do. I think that might have been Ricky. Definitely not the best decision. Offensive burn put out. Nice press the attack, though. And it is going to save Skitter in the long run. So at least they keep the Troll Warlord alive. Uh, he has yet to die yet, but this aggressive start for effect shows no signs of stopping right now. Sadoi, buddy, Shrapnel, LC, he's, he's fine. Nice armlet toggle there. Abaddon does have borrowed time still. LC's going to go for the duel. You know he, you know he wants to. He wants to. He's going to go for the duel on Roger, maybe? No, he's silenced currently. Can he get it off? Yes, he can. And now that's a dead Night Stalker. Aphotic Shield's not going to save him. Last year was like, oh, hello. Open wounds. And they're going right back in. 
Rage just pops with the Assassinate, ends up getting canceled. Down goes Ogre Magi. Sniper just sitting from a distance, putting in some auto attacks, but he's so weak right now. He has power treads and Ring of Aquila. He is doing minimal damage here. Go for my master. <laughs> Store of Spirit, that Bloodstone, it's, it's coming. It's looking pretty damn good. Our Zeke accidentally pressed the R button. No, I'm sure he meant to use that to farm up here, but if, if I saw that correctly, I don't know if he really got most of that far. I think they're already dead. I don't know, anyways. I mean, to, to be fair, like, I'm making a joke of it, but obviously, you know, using that ability to, to push out a lane is definitely not the worst idea ever. It's not the longest cooldown. And it, you know, get some handy. effective farm for the Crystal Maiden right here. Speaking of that, what are you going to get at level 10? I, I personally like the idea of the plus 60 damage. It really helps you increase your individual farm. But also, I mean, honestly, just plus 60 damage from a support hero, putting in a couple of auto attacks during fights, be a nice difference maker for security set of kills. So, while well, I'm rambling on about Crystal Maiden, though, my expertise there. Roshan's going down. He just picked up by Troll. Obviously a great hero to do so with that fervor. And the battle trance, our, our Zeke here at the top lane, going to TP out. And they knew he was up here, but oh, Mikey cuts down the trees just a little bit too late. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. <coughs> Life Stealer's like, I'm tired of waiting. He's just going to pop on out, go for the tower. Does he have Death Slater yet? No. Scrub. Just kidding. Just needs a second Mithril Hammer, Radiant's and it's coming on. It's coming along pretty quickly here, actually. So secondary tower goes down. They're going to keep going, actually. I mean, Pent is pushing the top lane, but yeah, they'll need to get back. Ricky doesn't have a TP. Everyone else does. But the tier three is already taking damage. In fact, there's no way they're committing to this, though. They're just simply going to get the TP back, I'm sure. And then yeah, they'll fall back. But the next time a fight could happen, I mean, we're going to possibly see that Bloodstone happen on. Uh, onto Storm Spirit, the uh, uh, Desolator, of course, on a Life Stealer, definitely coming. Jeez, these next tier items looking so scary. Troll Warlord, I haven't talked too much about his build. The Vlad's into the Yasha, into the Sane. So I feel like uh, lately these Troll Gains, this is kind of that typical cookie cutter build. Our Zeke, he's going to be found here. Ignite comes out and we're going to commit quite a bit. The Freezing Field in return does a little bit of damage, but he does end up falling. Very ambitious Freezing Field right there. But again, not the longest farm, or not the uh, longest cooldown, that is. Oh boy, Storm Spirit, they find a chance on LC, and Fest Bomb ready. LC though with the haste rune. We pick up the banner right now, Troll's coming over, but Storm Spirit keeps on going. He's very low on mana, so he's just going to keep on running here and try to at least a duel comes out. But now here comes Lifestealer putting in the auto attacks in the Legion Commander. Trying to at least get him taken out, but now the Bash Box from Skitter. And Satoy will have to walk it off, so they do kill Storm Spirit. Well played by Penta there. So that Bloodstone going to be slowed down here. Abaddon has a hand of Minus, and now he's working on that Radiance. But again, he's not that one position, playing the three instead. And this is where it makes, it feels like it makes just a little more sense. A little more comfortable. You're not relying on him to be getting that great late game farm or heavily involved earlier on necessarily. In this case, it's Lifestealer, of course, who's doing his job. He almost has that Desolator. With the arm lift, but not to make light of what Penta's doing. I mean, they're pushing a mid-tier one here, which is going to be good. About a 7,500 net worth lead, though, in favor of effect. But this troll is farmed. He still has an Aegis. And it's going to be an easy tower kill as a result, but split push happening. We saw this last game as well, Shoshlo. Actually, at the top lane. He is in trouble, though. Duel's ready. Borrowed time makes it awkward, though. Okay, he's just going to pop it right here. So they get the borrowed time. No TP's coming in. Joshua's like, all right, fine, we'll fight. <laughs> Come at me, bro. Going to run at him with the Ponic Shield, but he finally will die. I was expecting them to be, like, pushing Tier 3 bottom during that. I, I think they kind of tried to. That's a massive creep wave, though. Ricky can't do much against that. They'll need some kind of support, but... So they don't get the best trade-off right there. It's actually a pretty good kill on Abaddon happening. Come in handy. Indeed. Blazemon, Dragonlance, Forest Staff, Hurricane Pike. Trying to finish that in full here. 1,400 gold saved up. 
Not been the friendliest game for him. But again, with the idea of buffing up the press the attack, the uh, Ogre Magi Bloodlust, which is level four now. They don't necessarily need the, the craziest items here. They Both uh, the Sniper and the Troll can do a lot of damage. Get you off guard if you're not careful. LC is going to be going into that Silver Edge ASAP, so he's even passing up the Blade Mill idea. Again, the Silver Edge, fantastic against Abaddon especially. And hell, even against the Life Stealer. So, actually a uh, very good item to be had. DNC, he's in trouble. Oh, that Smoke Cloud saves him, though. Couldn't get the Crystal Nova off in time because of it. And now, actually, our Zeke's in trouble himself. He'll throw the Frostbite, but if he stays alive especially, it's definitely distractions here. Tranquil Boots come online. Another Blink, though. Can he hide? Oh, he tills him again. <laughs> Prevent the Blinks of anything. So he's going to end up dying. Takes a while, but he will give up a dual charge to LC. Nice kill steal, bro. No. Uh, very good use there, obviously. 44 charges now. And actually not bad for only being 19 and a half minutes into this game. <laughs> Aegis has been reclaimed. Troll does have the SNY finish, though. Now the BKB next. <coughs> Definitely a great item. So this is what I'm talking about with Night Stalker. Remember that first Nightfall? Night Stalker got, what, three kills even? Since then, we've had a couple of Nightfalls, even a Darkness Radiant's used. It doesn't attack. feel like it's really been doing that much. Now, Bags does really put another level on. So he's working towards that. Over here. Storm Spirit has the Bloodstone finished. Orchid queued up for him next. Radiance Middle Tower. Well, I would love attack. to finish that BKP. And again, the Hurricane Pike just about finished for Sniper, actually. So nice couple of key items coming out here for this uh, Radiance side. And in fact, look at Troll. He's basically toe to toe with uh, with the life. What's up with Abaddon's getting caught by themselves farming Radiance? Happened last game too on the other side. And he's gonna die now. Bottom tier three. Okay, so they're gonna force a mass TP out of this. Storm Spirit gets away in time though, and so do the rest of them. So they got a bit of damage on the tower. Unhealable damage. But it did cost them the life of Abaddon, meanwhile, and slows down that Radiance yet again. Just got the Sacred Relic. <coughs> Infest Bomb, though. Good to go for Storm Spirit. Oh, they see Troll middle, but he's not going to go. Yeah, just got exposed right there. And a little too deep. But Sniper, he's not too deep. He's just right. Freezing Field. Gets a little bit of farm out of that, too. Nice find, though, in the end. Good patience not to commit towards a troll there and instead find a softer target. But also, if you're Sniper, you got to wonder what he's doing there in the first place. I mean, he definitely knew that they were in that area coming over. Obviously, they got exposed there, so. Maybe he just underestimated what, uh, how fast they could get there or what. But he gets caught. LC middle lane going to go for the quick on Crystal Maiden. Some more charges. <laughs> this LC is going to prove to be uh, a significant factor, I feel, if Penta's going to look good in this game. He now has 72 charges already. <coughs> and especially if he gets that Silver Edge, again, that's going to really lock down the likes of Abaddon and even the, uh, the Life Stealers mentioned. Help against him well, uh, very well with that Beast. Darkness has fallen again. Ags needs about 2,000 gold before he's finished that. And the Roshan has respawned. It's going to be checked here by Nice Soccer. Nope. Oh, maybe. Well, they pinged it out. He's telling him to check it. There we go. So, yeah, Roshan's up. Ricky, he's trying to finish the drums, actually. So, last game, DNC was able to get their Diffusal Blade, but this game definitely not going nearly as well. 0, 5 and 7 here. Overall net worth. Again, a little bit of a climb back now by Penta. Only a 5,000 net worth lead. And the experience is basically even here at this point. Hurricane Pike finished by Sniper. And the BKB Patrol, I'm sure, is almost here as he's going to help with the kill on a Storm Spirit, actually. So LC using that Shadow Blade to catch the Storm Spirit, I'm sure. 
They're doing Roshan meanwhile, but losing Storm Spirit hurts. He's going to be back up quickly, down to eight charges of the Bloodstone. He ports on in. Is this going to be quick enough, though? I don't think so. Radiant's coming over. They know what's happening. And can they get here in time? LC, he's making his way over. Does not have a duel just yet. I don't know if it's going to matter, actually. Roger just kind of zoning them out. There we go. Afro Ninja picks up the A just to go the immediate jump on a Ricky. And he's going to stay down for 40 seconds plus. So they're going to transition into this middle push now. Or maybe go top lane. Oh, they want to go top lane for the catch, actually. He zapped a little bit too far, though. Most awkward like. It flies right on past him. So instead, they'll transition to the tower kill. Top tower is under attack. So Storm Spirit down to eight. Now he's back up to nine at least as they get that kill on Ricky. And Life Stealer almost has the AC now finished as well. Radiance Abaddon, does he have the Radiance? He does. Abaddon does have the Radiance, and he's going to be queuing up the Solar Crest. So I guess this idea of the build is kind of similar too. Crystal Maiden may be in trouble right here, but nope, the Forest Staff helping to keep her alive. Nice pickup from her, actually. Drums activated from DNZ, though. They want to chase this. Don't go too deep, though. That's some reason they're feeling pretty comfortable about this. They may actually get Crystal Maiden. They will. Another winner for the LC. 100 charges, exactly. Store Spirit, however, at the top lane. Pushing it in. Has an Aegis. If he gets caught, though, it's going to be pretty critical. But it doesn't look like he's going to give them the chance, and he will TP elsewhere. So will they be able to make use of this Aegis? Night Stalker really trying to finish that axe. He hasn't been very involved as of late. DNZ is sitting on top of Josh Lowe here. He's taking some burn from the Radiance, though, meanwhile. So can't be doing that for too long. Lifestealer making his way over. <laughs> nice Midas use there by Abaddon. Enjoying the creep. Troll, thankfully, decided to fall back right there as they definitely were ready to fight if he wanted to commit. Nighttime not up for another two minutes. Darkness is down for 55 seconds. So, yeah, if you're, if you're effect right here, probably wait at least till darkness is up <clears throat> before you really try to make a play. Again, have that Aegis cell. Storm Spirit can maybe finish the Orchid, perhaps. But they're not going. They're kind of being aggressive right here. A little surprised at that. You're like, yeah, just sit back, wait a minute, wait another minute here, get that Orchid. Get the axe, if anything, as well as the darkness. Cool down. Meanwhile, Abaddon, he's found those Silver Edge, preventing the uh, Barlow Time from going off. And now Storm Spirit still trying to chase, though. The ball lighting in. They're going to catch Mikey right here. Life Dealer pops out. And they will at least get one turn kill. Can they get more? Ogre Magi, overcharge, auto attack, slowing him down. The root in place. As well with the Frostbite, the Ignite's going to be tossed right there. The Freezing Field helping. And down goes Jazz as well. And now the Void on the Sniper, but he will go over the ledge. But Afro Ninja wants more, damn it. He needs to fall back, though. So he'll get away, Sadoi. Also needs to run away, the assassinate. Nope, just going to mind he will end up using it just on the Night Stalker, though. So they weren't really that patient. Now they do make it a two-for-one exchange, though. And now Troll top lane. Uh-oh. Troll. Troll, buddy. Buddy. Any stopper? They don't got a stopper. No, they do. Yeah, they do. Boy comes out. And now Troll's in trouble. Bops the BKB. And it's the run game. Where's Storm Spirit? Hey, there's Storm Spirit. And now he's here. Yeah, Troll got greedy. He really wanted that tower kill. That's a bounty kill as well for the Storm Spirit right there. On top of no buyback for him for the next minute as well. So now it's Nightfall. You have the Axe on Night Stalker. You have the Orchid picked up on Storm Spirit. You have Lifestealer with the AC almost. Just about there. Solar Crest even just about finished on Abaddon, so some very key items coming out on the other side now. And that first BKB use, really not getting anything out of it as he dies anyways. Meanwhile, middle lane, LC going back in, wants another tool, has 118 charges. Not going to get it this time around, though. Now he's falling back with LC. Life Steel is going to be coming in. DNC is the one that's caught. He pops the tricks of the train. Trying to delay this, if anything, over here. Meanwhile, Blazeball's getting picked. He TP's out in time, though. They do get the pick on Ricky. And Ogre Magi also in a bad spot. He too will go down, double kill for Lifestealer. Troll's still dead for another 15 seconds. So at least the secondary tower kill. And now they're rotating to the bottom lane here, it looks like. 
They want to take out this tier three that is already low. Sadoink going on in. Pops the Rage. There's the fortification. Trolls back up. Blazemon going to be jumped on the background. Press the attack comes out. They have a Shrine use. Going to use it right there. Oh, now Storm Spirit's dead. However, the Age is going to bring it back up. Can he get out in time? Can they save him? Abaddon maybe get up here for a shield? Buddy? No? Okay, he's dead. I guess that was the call to leave him be. Down goes Crystal Maiden. The rest, they're, they're jetting on out of there. Storm Spirit only dead for 20 seconds. Again, back down to eight charges of that uh, Bloodstone right there. To my house. But still the big picture. Overall, not too shabby here for effect. A 7,500 net worth lead. <coughs> and over a 4,000 experience lead now. What? You guys You guys are really getting around my kids because I'm calling it charges? Jesus, Twitch chat. I love you guys at the same time, but come on, really? Fine. 136 damage. LC here with the 136 damage buff. Be sure to not say charges. We'll all be confused. Darkness has fallen. Everyone up and good to go. Of course, again, that Orchid on Storm Spirit now. Lifestealer, the AC, 2,100 more gold saved up. Troll Warther, though, he is leading the way as far as the net worth goes. He's actually going his own Silver Edge. And again, there is a lot of value this game in the item. We saw it earlier on the Abaddon. Oh, he's going to run in here. He goes right on the Lifestealer. A couple of Bash Procs throwing in. TP's on top of that. He'll jump inside Crystal Maiden, actually, <laughs> as they run away. Now Crystal. Keeping her distance. They do not have Storm Spirit with them. Does he have post taste? No, he does not. Or bots, I mean. Definitely said that. He does not have boots of travel, so he cannot join. So, yeah, if you're a fact, you definitely do not want to continue pushing right here without your Storm Spirit. So, as a team, they will decide to fall back. They get the response out of Penta, at least. Legion Commander now level 20, by the way. Has a plus seven armor talent here. Starting to have to keep an eye on that for almost eventual level 25s, of course. Somebody's caught over here. That's Ricky. He puts the smoke cloud down. Abaddon's running in. But for all time, okay, we'll be able to go off. No silver edge there. Ricky. Tricks in the trade in the background, though. Bash Brox on the Lifestealer, actually. Locking him down quite a bit. He's able to jump inside the target, though. May kill that target. Now he pops on out with the Infest, and now they're going to get the kill of Lifestealer. Skinner, he is attacking so damn fast with the blood. That's the fervor. The press the attack. He gets a double kill. And guess what? Storm Spirit was not there. However, he was pushing a Tier 3 top lane, and he gets the Tier 3 tower kill. I mean, it took them three deaths. They did get two hero kills. I, I guess big picture, you could overall be... Somewhat satisfied to fear effect, but yeah, it seems like they're getting a little sloppy with some decision making here. Let the fun begin. Where's the party? At least they have the shrines exposed now. <laughs> Troll Warlord, that silver edge though, coming along nicely. Mjolnir. Finished on Sniper, meanwhile. So he's definitely accomplishing the idea of just sit back and be a lot of damage. <coughs> Storm Spirit can't really continue that momentum again. Back to nine charges of the Bloodstone. Trying to pick up a Lincoln Sphere right here to prevent that duel from being effective. But uh, I know we, we've, we've seen the idea of getting a Heaven's Halberd on Legion Commander, if anything, as a Lincoln's Popper. <laughs> See you, Crystal. <laughs> Illusion. So she's dead for 40. <sighs> Gem queued up for Night Stalker. Doesn't have one yet. Wait, did he have one? Did he have any gems in this game? Uh, there's a gem and ogre. I wonder if that was that stolen initially. It was purchased by Roger, actually. So uh, looks like he, yeah, he, that was his gem, and so he has to buy another one now. So well played there. Another thing I overlooked. BKB down to seven seconds for uh, for Skitter here. Roshan, he should be up very soon. You see the LC with the illusion is ready to scout it out. 
Man, this Ogre Magi. Magic Wand, Arcane Boots. But you know what? He has this ability right here. He could literally have Brown Boots, and he'd be doing just fine. He is a bloodlust machine. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Passing that around. We saw the troll, especially just how fast he ended up attacking in that last fight. His targets. Uh, Life Stealer didn't even stand a chance. Usually Life Stealer is, is decent, you know, standing up to 1v1 battles especially, but not against the Troll Warlord, especially with that Bloodlust buff. Death's bounty. Over here now. <laughs> Smoking on through from effect. They see Roshan's up. Meanwhile, on the other side, smoke up as well. So both teams have similar idea. Darkness has fallen. Oh boy, dust coming out. Not going to spot Ricky though. Our Zeke's kind of going in the front lines. There's a background live stealer jump with the offense bomb. They get the quad caught a sniper. And Ogre Magic is also dropping. Skitter's like, all right, I just got to simply auto attack. Right click, baby, with the BKB. He takes out Night Soccer. He does not get another kill, though. LC will fall. And now it's just Skitter versus the world. DNC is here with the smoke cloud to help, actually. And look at him maybe pick off Sonoy in the background. But Skitter now turns his attention to Storm Spirit. That smoke cloud causing a lot of issue, but it will not be enough in the end. Down goes Skitter right there. A four for one. They lose Night Stalker. But the ultimate. Goal definitely accomplished there in that fight, and now it's going to transition nicely into a Roshan kill on top of that. Borrow time wasn't even used throughout that. That life stealer bomb, though, in the background. Oh my god. Immortality is mine. Yeah, no, that, that was a perfect placement of the life stealer bomb from the Storm Spirit. And controlling that fight as a result. So now they have another Aegis here on Storm Spirit. And there's no cheese, I don't believe, right? Ricky? Well, that's a very early shrine to use. They expected them to definitely commit a lot more, to be fair. But now they will not have the shrine here either. They do have one more right here. There goes my perfect circle. But tier 3 middle's dead. LC's up in 5. Troll would have a buyback. Not having to use it, though, at least. So there's some positive. Oh! <laughs> Pops the borrow time. He has the Octarine Core now queued up, but they're going to go for a Shrine. This will be the first Shrine of the two. Easily kill that one. The top one again, still up. But eventually going to make their way over there, so nice soccer. Comes back in. He still has that gem queued up. Actually unable to... Wait, did they end up getting back the gem? No, Ricky ended up picking it up. Okay. So now Ricky has the gem. Night Stalker heading towards the top lane. They're trying to catch the LC. It was hanging around, but LC now down. Uh, it's 136 victory damage. BKB queued up. Silver Edge just finished on Troll, right? Yeah, he has that. Now he has the Eye of Scotty coming along. <coughs> but it really just comes down to initiate, and whoever gets the jump, it seems like, is going to be controlling these fights. I mean, both sides definitely have potential to win. A lot of these single target focus on either side. So it's whoever gets the better of the jumps here. Vision's key, and going up against a Night Stalker with a gem is very difficult to control that vision. Kind of looking at the uh, the Radiant Vision right now, and you can see that's somewhat lackluster. They've got a pretty aggressive one over here. As Night Stalker is going to be spotted by Ricky, going pretty aggressive. Night Stalker, well, you're in a bad spot, bro. Well, there we go. They do find one pickoff. Yeah, Ricky just sitting on top of him, and... They did take out the Shrine meanwhile, so Night Stalker dead for a minute, though. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Oh, they're going to chase down Abaddon here. He pops up Borrowed Time himself. Yeah, just to clarify, guys, because it's even being brought up in chat. So why I keep uh, talking about the idea of Silver Edge, unless I'm completely mistaken, I'm pretty sure how the interaction works where it will stop the passive proc of the Borrowed Time. So that's what we saw last game, too, the Silver Edge being purchased against him with the LC. Now vice versa here. Uh, in fact, the second one on to Troll Warlord. In fact, he's going in. There is no Borrowed Time. He wants this kill. Bash procs, baby. He's not getting them, though. Which is to range, and Abaddon will actually stay alive as a result. So that could have been a pretty key kill, but stays alive. He would have a buyback, worst case. 
But uh, yes, it would stop the pass, so you could still use it yourself, but in the case of like an LC duel, obviously it wouldn't go off at that point, so. And it couldn't use it. So just to be clear on what the deal with that is, bottom lane, Mailer Act goes down meanwhile, so a bit of that distraction coming into play at the top side of uh, Abaddon, and ends up getting the Melee Racks killed. Crystal Maiden will give him some more victory damage to LC right there. Oh, they spot Ricky, though. <laughs> he got too comfortable going on up. They must have the gem, yeah. Gem the nice sucker. They're also going to catch the Ogre Magi. Sniper sitting in the distance. Oh, Troll, he's up at the front lines. Has Sniper back there. Elsie coming back in as well. Life Shielder jumps in. His teammate right there in Abaddon. Goes for the kill onto, onto uh, Troll Roller. He gets the kill as a result. Nice Hurricane Pike pushback. A lot of misses, though, coming out. And Sniper just melts a second they get next to him. The buyback from Troll Roller. This is the last game right here. The Whirling Axes going for the missed chances right here. Able to stand his ground with Skitter. No bloodlust this time around. And Fervor not really stacking up either. And he made it falling once again with the tieback. That's going to go down. And that should do it. Good game, well played. Good luck further being called. It looks like Effect will take game two and thus move it on in the series here as they win it 2-0 over Penta. So big win for them. Again, clearly uh, a little more the experienced team and definitely the team favored going in. But, you know, Penta, solid up-and-coming team in the European region and expected them to, uh, to look pretty good. And they did at points, but Effect clearly the better team, and they are moving on as a result. So congratulations to them. Was, uh, was a lot of just good, clean Dota for the most part to watch right there. So, All right, so Effect moving on. They're going to be playing Na'Vi now in the next round of the tournament right here. So we now have our quarterfinals are all officially set up here. Our quarterfinals of the Star Letter I-League Invitational Season number 2 European Qualifiers. Uh, just to read them over real quickly once again, we got Team Empire versus Friends, Vega Squadron versus EPG, Cloud9 versus Team Spirit, and Navi versus Effect, as just mentioned right there. So those are your quarterfinals, and that will be continuing on action here throughout these next couple of days. I believe this just pretty much goes straight through Sunday, if I'm not mistaken, uh, and coverage will be right here on this channel uh, throughout the rest of this week. So obviously, you know, definitely be following this channel. Look forward for more of that coverage and having fun with it. So um, with that said, guys, uh, going to be wrapping up here on the stream for tonight. Uh, a couple of shout-outs to make, though. First is uh, I actually want to announce here, too, that uh, I am doing a podcast show. <laughs> I'm having trouble saying what I want to say. Uh, I'm going to be doing a podcast show starting this Friday, actually. Uh, for those that have heard of uh, uh, .p, Defense of the Patients, uh, it's actually a podcast organization one of the top ones here that's uh, been around for a while. They do a lot of fun podcast shows. And uh, recently here, just this last week, in fact, I, I signed on with them. I'm going to be doing their competitive uh, Dota 2 podcast show. So I'm looking forward to having a lot of fun with that. Uh, in fact, I have a couple of special guests to, to join me for what's going to be this Friday's release show. You can check out defenseofthepatients.com. And uh, we'll be debuting at my Friday show here. Um, i got a couple of guests. Like I said, Capitalist and Red Eye, in fact, will be on the show. And we'll be talking about the Kiev Major in different points there. So looking forward to having a lot of uh, fun with that. Again, defenseofthepatients.com. You can check it out there. Uh, also, you know, follow me on Twitter and Facebook and everything at BreakyCPK. I'm always doing more content, a lot of casting here lately in the Dota 2 scene, and frankly having a lot of fun doing it. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this broadcast as well as my others and potentially more to come. But for this broadcast here, we are going to be wrapping up. Uh, I'm going to be done here casting this event uh, we'll be new casters throughout the rest of this week, so good luck to them. And I know I'll be at least keeping an eye on watching what I can myself. So, But outside of that, shout-out to Tsunami as well for joining me earlier. And shout-out to you guys for tuning in. I had a lot of fun today, and it seemed like you guys were having fun in chat, from what I could tell as well. So have a good night, guys. Congratulations to the winners again, especially Effect here and Team Spirit earlier. Until then, we'll see you next time on the broadcast. Have a good night, guys.